Hi all listeners, let's learn sumo. I'm Clayton, welcome to the podcast, where we try to learn something new about sumo every episode. Hit subscribe, download the pod from your favourite source, drop me a line on Insta or X, Twitter, at Let's Learn Sumo. Firstly, I must apologise to my regular listeners. My last episode was on about day six of the tournament, and unfortunately, a family emergency uh, came about as I got back to Australia, and it's pretty much taken all of my time for the past few weeks, uh, meaning I only got to see parts of the tournament towards the end. I've now taken a bit of time to catch up and had a look at as many of the fights as possible on replay, so I hope you stick around for my take on the Hatsuba show in January. Let's start with where we left off. Happy New Year to everybody. We talked about that. Uh, Kirishima was on his rope run for Yokozuna promotion. After winning the Basho in November, he was looking to win this one to put himself in front of the Yokozuna committee. Yokozuna Terano Fuji came about and said he's competing. So day six, we had him doing well, but he did take a loss to Wakamoto Haru. Kotonawaka, he was on his Ozeki run. Wakamoto Haru, he's looking for his return to Sanyaku after his demotion to Magashira from his poor tournament in November. Daesho, he's trying to restart his Ozeki intentions. Hoshoryu, again, trying to find a bit of consistency at Ozeki. And Ura and Takiyasu at Komasubi in the meat grinder positions. So let's get on with it. Terano Fuji, look, two losses... But in the end, he wins the Yusho in a fight-off with Kotonawaka. Lost one to Wakamoto Haru in a pretty epic duel. That was a really good fight. Loose Mawashi, that was early in the tournament, gave Wakamoto Haru his, uh, a uh, Kinboshi star, a gold star for a win against the Yokozuna. Remember, they can only do that from Megashira ranks. Once they get up into the, Sanya- uh, the Sanyaku ranks, they don't get a, a Kinboshi or gold star, which gets them a little bit of extra money. Uh, and certainly some glory in that uh, those sort of wins. Shodai and Terunofuji, look, Terunofuji tried to lock up his arms uh, as he does get that real painful-looking double arm lock, but Shodai had the power to move the Okazuna and walk him out. So otherwise, uh, another win against him. But Terunofuji, Terunofuji otherwise did well with his patented arm grabs, like he once used on uh, Arby three times to affect his position change within the Doho. Goniyama, he suffered a really nasty arm grab, which led to a belt grab and a throwdown. It was pretty uh, effective from Terunofuji there on Osho. So he had a really good first week of the tournament. He came up, he's got his Kachikoshi, comes up from Megashira 14. He found out about the Yokozuna arm grab as well, as he was thrown out with speed. We'll go back to that later. Terunofuji, he tried for an arm grab on Hokuto Fuji, but he lost it and he adjusted, locking Hokuto Fuji's arms up. Got a bit of a body grab and look, it's clear his adaptability, his strength makes him a pretty formidable tournament as any Yokozuna would be. Uh, And he took Hokuto Fuji out. But he's not invincible. As we said, Shodai got his arms locked up, but he manoeuvred the Yokozuna towards the Tawara bales and outpowered him over the bales. That's a rare occurrence there. Um, a few wins he had to work for. Ryudan got into a pretty good Mawashi grip battle with the Yokozuna, but eventually he got stood up and walked out. Nishikigi, he made him work to recover from an early throw attempt, but he eventually got body pumped out over the bales. So Terunofuji did say after the tournament, he lifted the trophy, and a very big trophy that was, uh, that he wasn't fighting with confidence until about after he beat Nishikigi. So he felt that he was back to power after that win. On Asato, well, he got up in front of the Yokozuna for a first time on debut uh, and summarily got tossed into the crowd. Uh, we'll go back and we'll talk about On Asato a little bit later. Uh, first Fusensho win for the Yokozuna against Hoshoryu set the Yokozuna up at 11 wins equal to Kotonawaka late in the tournament after denying him a win in the regular bouts. Uh, they faced each other, caught Kotonawaka's arm, caught his arm and controlled him around the ring, got him upright and forced him over. That was the end of day 14. Uh, both the Yokozuna and Kotonawaka were on 12 wins at that point. 
Yokozuna was matched with Ozeki Kirishima on day 15. And wow, what a spectacular loss that was handed to the Ozeki, putting an end to his rope run for Yokozuna promotion. Took him out of the Yusho race. Uh, it was just not the loss that would have made him look good at that time. It, it really ended his run, and the manner in which he ended his run was uh, really sealed Kirishima's fate. Uh, to lose that way, not be competitive. The Yokozuna really, it was clear he handed a message to the Yokozuna Deliberation Council saying he didn't think Kirishima was ready, and he did it in a most imperious manner. They met at the Eye. Terafuji got both arms around the upper body of Kirishima. He didn't go for the belt. He lifted him bodily off the ground, walked him back, and then pushed him into the crowd. Uh, it was a fairly defeated Kirishima. He looked pretty crestfallen after that loss. Um, look, the Yokozuna Deliberation Council did mention afterwards that they didn't th- consider Kirishima for promotion, but they acknowledged that it took uh, Wakano Hana and Hakoho more than one attempt to be considered for promotion to Yokozuna. So there was no shame in how he went about it. He was very close, but just not quite there. And certainly that uh, that loss really sealed it for him. Winning two Yushos in a row, it's clear that that's a difficult thing to do, uh, particularly at Ozeki. Some work to do for Kitashima, both to work out how he can beat Terunofuji next time and rebuild his confidence after that uh, pretty spectacular loss. So that set up the Yusho playoff with Kotonawaka and Terunofuji, and uh, that was probably the best outcome for the tournament. It was a, a fairly exciting last day. Kotonawaka met the Yokozuna at the uh, Tachiai. Uh, look, Kotonawaka went for a big double body grip, uh, Terunofuji locked both of his arms and, Koten- and Terunofuji tried a bit of a body throw. It wasn't very successful. It uh, didn't quite uh, knock Kotonawaka off his balance. Uh, that meant that Terunofuji could work him back towards the bales, but Kotonawaka showed his improved balance and positioning. He got some lateral movement, went around the, the dohyo, stayed steady, kept his upper body grip on the Yokozuna. Yokozuna changed his his grip to uh, an inside deep rear left belt grip on Kotonawaka as the uh, Sekiwake took an outside right Mawashi grip on the Yokozuna. You can see Kotonawaka was trying to set up a belt throw. He had a bit of a body movement, but uh, the Yokozuna still has uh, significant weight and power, and he steadily used it to get Kotonawaka back to the Tawara Bales, bit more upright and then obviously the body pumping of the big Yokozuna to shove him out of the win- out of the ring. They both tumbled over the side. Officially, it was a, a Yorikiri uh, Kimarite for the win and a massive Emperor's Trophy. Uh, the first Yokozuna to win the Hatsu Basho for eight years. So that's an impressive comeback tournament for our Yokozuna who's been out for a fair while. Only did one tournament last year. Uh, he said, look, the Yokozuna Council said after it, they uh, were very impressed. They said he's still got the heart, body and technique of a Yokozuna. Bear in mind, his one tournament last year that he won earned him uh, apparently a bit over $2 million. So not a bad payday for one tournament. Don't feel so sad for Kotonawaka. The bout he had against Kirishima on day 14 uh, had a record amount of prize money in envelopes in sumo at 63 envelopes. I think I put the wrong figure on uh, X about this one. It was 1.89 million yen, which translates to about 13,000 US dollars, about 20,000 Australian dollars. Uh, That is apparently a record sponsor's envelope. Uh, amount, so uh, he did all right in that one match. Kotonawaka met his 13-win requirement, and shortly after the tournament, he was announced as a promotion to Ozeki, so we will have four Ozekis at the March tournament. At this stage, I've heard, you know, competing stories. He uh, will keep his Shikona, his name uh, of Kotonawaka for the moment, but in time, he apparently will change to Kotozakura, uh, which is, uh, I think, his grandfather's uh, wrestling name. Perhaps around the July tournament, maybe if he wins the Basho, uh, one, the, the next time he wins the tournament. 
Uh, it's clear his sumo keeps improving with each tournament. His his balance and technique seems much more stable. His range of techniques is diversified over the past year as well. His only two losses in this tournament come from a fired-up Wakamoto Haru, who's look, obviously looking to get back to Sekiwake, and the Yokozuna Turner Fuji, both in regular time and in the playoff match. That being said, you know, matching the strength and size of the current Yokozuna, that's a challenge for anybody. Uh, in his match with Midori Fuji, he pulled off the Karasukashi on the Karasukashi King himself from a very low position, and uh, I think that likely that move, plus his improved uh, range of techniques, that won him the technique prize for the tournament as well. Uh, he summarily dispatched each of the lower Magashira contenders who normally end up facing the Sanyaku in the second week after putting together scores in the first week. So uh, the big fights of his two weeks include beating Kirishima on day 14, uh, Kotonawaka false started or did a mata twice before the match uh, commenced, which I think had a bit of an effect of putting uh, the opponent off somewhat. On the on the third go, however, Kirishima got a quick touchy eye just by a moment, went for a thrusting attack on Kotonawaka, and which led to a, a really you know, quite a, a fierce static not a neck push with his left hand to hold Kotonawaka at bay. That held him at bay for a few moments before he batted Kirishima's hand away, went for a neck thrust himself. Kirishima commenced to a thrusting attack, but unusually got a bit too committed, which resulted in uh, Kotonawaka getting a hand around the back of Kirishima's neck and pulled him down for the win. Kotonawaka converted the move behind Kirishima, Yorikiri, push out and a big payday uh, up to Ozeki for him and damage to the rope run for Kirishima on day 14. We know what happened to Kirishima on day 15. Takakesho, he went Kujo injured after day four. And so we already know he will be in Karaban status as an Ozeki come in March. Uh, that means he needs his Kachikoshi eight wins to remain as Ozeki or he will fall back to Sekiwake. And there's different rules about how he gets back up as well. It's been about the ninth or tenth time he's been Karaban over the years. Uh, and with his neck issue at the moment, that's a long-term injury. He is no certainty to escape a Kataban this time. Uh, Shoryu, he finished tournament 10 and 4 with one absence on the last day. You may notice that even though he didn't appear on day 14, it is counted as a loss to Terano Fuji rather than an absence, as he did not present uh, Kujo, rather he forfeited before he went Kujo. Uh, and so he's listed on the Torakumi for day 14. So officially, he was 10 wins, 4 losses, 1 absence, not 10 wins, 3 losses, uh, 2 absences. Uh, doesn't really make any difference. He still pushed double figures, which is not bad for an Ozeki. Kirishima, uh, that fight is one for the ages for the pair of Ozekis. The old judo style came to the fore for Kirishima as Hashoryu, and they both got a one-handed belt grip, a body grip with the other hand. Hashoryu tried to lift and roll Kirishima as he committed his feet to the move. Kirishima executed a leg trip a roll throw, which saw Hoshoryu go down hard on the ring. And I think it was here that he hurt his knee in the fall. Look, the replay shows his, his knee buckle a little bit, Hoshoryu, as the move went. So, you know, it's a matter of conjecture whether he did it before or just at the uh, because of the technique. Look, it was a forceful technique win for Kirishima. Officially, the Kimarite was a Nimaigeri, an ankle twisting, t sorry, an ankle kicking twist down to lift an opponent's body and use your foot to kick the outer side of the opponent's ankle, knocking him down towards the kicked leg. How specific and a bit rare. Apparently not used in Magashira uh, Makuchi, I should say, apparently for about 10 years. One of the better proponents of uh, Nimai Geri Kimarete was uh, Toki Tenku, who used it 11 times in his career back in the early 2000s through to about... Uh, I think he fought to about 2016, so it was somewhere towards the end of his career when he last used that. Another so-so tournament for Daesho, finishing at 9-6. and six, uh, Our consistent threshing machine performed well. Elements of trying out a belt grip at least once in this tournament, but his Ozeki run has obviously fallen a bit flat. Uh, he did get a few lucky wins, and I'd, I'd count Midori Fuji uh, his win over Midori Fuji is a, a fairly lucky win there. I uh, thought that uh, uh, Daesho was in deep trouble at a couple of points in that uh, fight, and I think so did Daesho. Wakabota Haru, 
He had a stellar tournament, taking his first Kinboshi Gold Star win on day two, as we've spoken about. Uh, big pay bonus, and I think, uh, obviously, he gets the outstanding performance prize as well. And due to uh, both Komasubi's Takiyasu and Ura not making Kachikoshi, they both put a losing record, I would think that Wakamoto Haru is very likely to be re-promoted straight back to Sekiwake for the March tournament. An excellent January result for him. He was quite fired up. Ura, the acrobat, joined the Sanyaku ranks in Komasubi for the first time. Incredible comeback from his knee injuries of the past. He has changed his technique, apparently, um, but he still fights very low, harking back to his Greco-Roman wrestling roots. Uh, look, he took an absolute beating in the first week, losing every match except for the uh, excuse me, the Fusen win over Takakesho after he went to Kujo before he finally notched up a win against Atami Fuji on day nine. Things improved in the last four days, giving him six wins for the tournament, but a definite demotion in store for Ura. His acrobatic ways have not abandoned him. I just think he's a little bit unlucky in this tournament. He did... You know, that Komasubi, Magashira 1-2 we've spoken about before, they are the meat grinder positions. They really get a, a beating in that first week against the entire Sanyaku ranked sumo. Uh, I think he still needs to find a bit more balance in that very low position. And maybe once he gets to the Sanyaku ranks, maybe try and be a bit less of a chaos agent in his movements. Uh, I mean by that, he... He's very mobile, and I think uh, that mobility sometimes leaves him vulnerable at, the t- at times. Look, the uh, highlight for Ura in the tournament was the underarm knockdown Kimarite against Ryuden on the last day. Now, it's officially, and I, I, I have tried to practice this, a tsu... T- no, and I got it wrong. Tsu Tezori, an underarm knockdown. So it's pretty rare Kimarite where he passed under the arms of the opponent and lean back to knock him down. It was quite the acrobatic move, and again, another fairly rare one. It's probably rare because you need to be have the strength to knock down a really big guy, and it's usually uh, performed in the lower ranks because they're a bit smaller, a little bit more mobile, and their opponents are not always that large. So uh, a really good win there for Ura. Takiyasu got a first win on at uh, Komasubi on his first day against Hokuto Fuji, uh, but he lost to Ozeki Kirishima day two. Then he went out injured on day six um, and came, sorry, he went out injured after day two, came back on day six, uh, beat uh, Ura with an Awatanage throw, uh, but then he lost to Wakamoto Haru, and that seemed to finish it for him. He went Kujo again after that, and finished with a 2, 4, and 9 record and certain demotion. He'll go flying down the order, I would think. Midori Fuji had another stinker of a tournament in the meat grinder Magashira 2 position, ending on 5 and 10. Look, I think he was a bit unlucky in uh, his fight with Daesho. Uh, Daesho somehow recovered from a very poor position out of balance. I think he was a little bit unlucky with Kotonawaka. I think Kotonawaka somehow got uh, into a good position to pull him down. But that being said, you know, he did get a win against Kirishima. Uh, it's a classic Karasakashi Kimarate win uh, Kimarite win over the powerful Ozeki and worth any of the replays. We'll be watching that one again towards the end of the year. There are a few unlucky moments, and I think the result doesn't really reflect how well he fought. Uh, that being said, he was dominated by Hoshoryu and Takakesho. Um, our other person, Atami Fuji, who's been flying up the Banske, he found life difficult at Magashira 1, finishing a Makekoshi 6-9. I think he just lacks a bit of strength. Uh, he doesn't seem to have the same sort of power as the uh, Sanyaku guys. A bit of time will fix that, uh, a bit more training. Arby punched out a Kachikoshi, which will likely see him up in maybe Komasubi from Magashira 2. He will likely be joined by Nishikigi from uh, Magashira 5, who's the next wrestler to get a Kachikoshi at 8 and 7. Such is the dire state of the Magashira ranks from Magashira 1 down to about Magashira 5 or 6. Demotions are likely for Takiyasu Ura, um, Tami Fuji, Midori Fuji, Gonoyama, who had five wins, Hokuto Fuji, only four and went absent, Tobizaru just missed out on seven and eight, Shodai four and 11, a really bad tournament for him, Ryuden had a stinker, three and 12. 
Some will be worse than others, and I'd expect a few maybe over promotions. Uh, Asani Yama, even though he went Kujo towards the end of the tournament, went 9 3 and 3. Hiradumi, Magashira 8, he punched out a just uh, got his Kachikoshi at 8 and 7. Maysay, 9 and 6. Look, I thought Maysay fought really well this tournament. I uh, thought he had better push, better technique, and a little bit of fire in his belly. Much better than what I saw him fight the last few months of 2023. Maybe he's gotten over an injury or something, uh, found a little key to his technique. But uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed watching Maysay fight this tournament, uh, more so than I have before. Our other Kachikoshi winners will be Tamawashi, 8 and 7, Sudagishu. Surigisho, 9 and 6. Oho had a really good tournament at 10 and 5, as did Takanosho at 10 and 5. Koto Shoho at 9 and 6 did well. Onosato, the new boy, and Shimazumi, 9 and 6. 11 and 4 for Onosato, 9 and 6 for Shimazumi. So, Onosato at 11 and 4 got the Fighting Spirit Prize from Magashira 15. He only lost to our Sanyaku ranks, Kotonawaka Hoshoryu Terunofuji, but he did also lose, I think it was about day two or something, to Onosho. Uh, he was put up to Sanyako f- the fights uh, fairly early. He did have his Kachikoshi at 8 and 2, uh, but he fell in all three bouts. Look, for someone like uh, a debutante like Onosato to fight the Yokozuna as a newly promoted Magashira Rashiki, I can imagine he would have been incredibly nervous and it was quite an honour for him. Uh, you've got to understand, he is still a sumo trainee and it's only just after this tournament that he actually graduated from sumo training school. Uh, We'll go into sumo training school at a later time, but it's basically where they learn about sumo life. Uh, Talk about commitment. He had a one hour, 20 minute commute each way to get to training uh, at Ibaraki and to the school. So uh, quite a long uh, commute to go back and forth between his baya and the school at the Kokugikan. Um, look, with Onosho and Atami Fuji and uh, people like that, Terana Fuji did say after the tournament that less noise, noise needs to be made about these younger guys who come in hot uh, into Magashiri. He said they need to work more on strength, endurance, improving their technique as they come up the buns, K. And I tend to agree with him because Atami Fuji came in hot... Uh, found himself in Upper Magashira, and to me, he just lacked a bit of power and strength in comparison to some of the other guys. He's certainly got some technique, he's got some power, but uh, you can see the difference in power uh, between those guys, the upper guys, and someone new to it, like Atami Fuji. So that is the January tournament. Hopefully, life settles a bit for me and I can drop a few more episodes. Uh, I have a few plans for this year. Uh, I will explore some of the Kimarite and we'll learn a little bit more about the uh, the great sport of sumo. I expect uh, and I'm currently planning to hit the September tournament in Tokyo this year, the Aki Waki Aki Basho. Um, hopefully, you might see me and hear from me at that time. Uh, and uh, it should be a good tournament, maybe towards the beginning, I think. Anyway, thank you for listening. We'll talk next time. I'll drop an episode shortly. Hakioi, let's learn sumo.